Welcome back to the Reversing Autoimmune series. This is Gabriel Ruda with ReverseAutoimmune.com. And in this segment, we're going to talk about how toxic food damages the gut and what to do about it. So what's actually happening when toxic food enters our body? We talked about toxic food in the last presentation. When that stuff comes in our body, what's it actually doing? What's happening in our body? And how is that contributing to autoimmune diseases? And really, it does a lot. I'm gonna scratch the surface and you're gonna get a general overview and you're gonna understand the basics of what's going on. And so you could start healing. So we're still actually in the process of talking about the four factors that are causing autoimmune diseases, environmental toxins, toxic food, toxic emotions, and genetic mutations. And so we've already talked about environmental toxins, we've already talked about toxic foods, and now we wanna discuss what that's happening in the body. We wanna understand the physiology behind that. And so we're going to also discuss uh, overprocessed foods, tobacco and alcohol, caffeine. We're going to see how that fits into this as well. So what's that toxic food doing when it comes into our body? When you ingest a food that is um, mutation bread, that is GMO, covered in pesticides, something of that sort, when you ingest that food, it goes in your body. The problem can start already in your stomach. It could change the pH of your stomach, inhibiting digestion, which in turn is gonna cause, cause fermentation. And you see the stomach's important because the stomach is like one of our first lines of defense. It's uh, a gatekeeper, if you will, and it's supposed to prevent a lot of bad bacteria from entering further into the digestive system. And so when that pH isn't right, it's not doing that. You're inhibiting that first line of defense and it could start causing bad bacterial overgrowth in your small intestines. And we're gonna find out why that's really, really bad. And um, on this point, there are a number of people out there who are on antacids, proton pump inhibitors, and uh, those things are actually making the problem much, much worse. I guess perhaps if you had like really severe ulcers, you know, for a very short time, but people are on those things for years. I even heard a case of someone that was on a proton pump inhibitor for 20 years. That, uh, we're talking long-term damage probably at that point. And so, they're actually taking away one of your first lines of defense, which is your stomach acid. And so you're taking that away so bad bacteria is able to get through your stomach that's not supposed to into your intestines. The main problem when you're ingesting toxic food really is going on in your intestine, your small intestine being the first part that's uh, dealt with. And the problem is twofold. We have leaky gut and gut dysbiosis. What are those? Let's talk about leaky gut first. What's leaky gut? It's when you're small, okay, let me describe the small intestine first. It's lined with these finger-like projections called villi. And these villi are able to absorb nutrients, but at the same time, they're able to keep bad stuff out of the body. It's, uh, it acts as a wall. It takes the good and it tries to keep out the bad. And specific nutrients are allowed to pa pass through Toxins, uh, undigested food particles are blocked. However, when we start eating toxic food, it literally starts, as the health professionals put it, punching holes in the walls of your small intestines. And this happens through a variety of mechanisms. I don't have time to get into all those mechanisms right now, but one of the key ones is inflammation. You've probably heard that term a lot when people have been discussing autoimmune diseases, inflammation. How does inflammation happen? Well, when we ingest uh, one of those foods, a GMO food, a mutation bread food, something that's got a lot of pesticides on it, something that's uh, maybe an animal product that has a lot of carcinogens and hormones in there, the body identifies it as a toxin and identifies it as a, a pathogen, if you will, a foreign invader, something that's a threat to the body. And the body says, you know, especially with the GMO foods and the... Uh, over hybridized the mutation bread foods, the body says, I don't recognize you. You don't look like something natural. You don't look like nature. I'm gonna attack you, I don't like you. And it's, it goes and it starts attacking. The body's very good at that. It has an immune system. And this immune system response causes inflammation. Now, inflammation, you know, you hear about that a lot and it's got kind of a bad rap. Inflammation when it's acute actually isn't bad. It's the body's normal response to deal with injury. Chronic inflammation is deadly. Chronic inflammation can and will 
kill you. And you see, inflammation is an emergency response of the body. And so chronic inflammation is literally putting your body in a constant emergency response state. So that's not going to be good. And an emergency that never stops is slowly going to wear away your life. That's what's going to happen. And we've already uh, discussed in this series that autoimmune diseases shorten a woman's life on average by 15 years. So there's the shortening of the lifespan. And if you're continually eating this toxic food, guess what's happening? Your body's continually attacking it and you have continual inflammation happening, specifically in the small intestine. That's the first place that the action really, really starts. And this chronic attacking causes inflammation in the small intestine walls, and that creates a leaky gut where there's actually uh, holes, little tiny microscopic holes on, in the inside of the gut walls. And so now we're punching holes in our colon through toxic food and chronic inflammation. And now the reason why this is really, really bad, I mean, it sounds bad, right? But a, a reason why it's really bad is because now viruses, bad bacteria, um, toxins, uh, pathogens, they can get into your bloodstream. As you pass through the colon walls, now you can get into the bloodstream and it literally can travel to every single part of your body. You see, your bloodstream is like the freeway. It's like the highway system of your body. And once something gets in there, it has access to every organ, every tissue, including your brain. And so you don't want to punch holes in that intestine wall because it could get into the bloodstream and it can go all over the body, become systemic. And this induces an autoimmune response in the body. And um, it can happen in many different parts and there's many different mechanisms through which uh, it happens. There's many different postulations how this takes place. Some health professionals are saying that once your body is trained to attack gluten, and then it gets into your bloodstream, it starts going throughout the body, those, uh, um, those gluten uh, proteins, that it actually causes your body to start attacking other organs. And the reason is, is because gliadin, which is a protein in gluten, looks very similar to proteins in different organs in your body. And the body gets confused and it starts attacking. It starts um, getting confused and attacking those proteins on your organs that look like gliadin. And uh, some say that uh, these uh, toxins could actually go and start rewriting the DNA in your cells and they start freaking out and attacking your own tissues. So there's many different postulations, but the, pro the, the main concept is, is that your tissues are getting caught in the friendly crossfire when viruses, bad bacteria, undigested food particles, toxins are going into your bloodstream because you got those holes in your gut. That's leaky gut. Now let's talk about gut dysbiosis, because that was the second gut issue that we were uh, discussing that we want to talk about. So gut dysbiosis is a microbial imbalance in your intestines. That's a real nutshell way to put it. So you see your gut has a continual bacteria presence, and there's, a, there's always this balance between good gut bacteria and bad gut bacteria. And as long as the balance remains in the favor of the good, Everything's good. It's okay because the good can keep the bad in check. And this balance is about 85% good bacteria, about 15% bad bacteria. And as long as that good is in the majority, everything's okay. Gut dysbiosis is when the bad bacteria outweighs the good and starts wreaking havoc in your body. Friends, your gut bacteria is extremely important. You want to have healthy gut bacteria. I mean, just about every major disease uh, somehow, some way is coming through your gut. Your gut has a lot to do with diseases in the body. And many neurotransmitters, I was shocked until uh, when I started researching and understanding this, many neurotransmitters are not produced in your brain, they're produced, guess where? In your gut. As a matter of fact, uh, some um, scientists and uh, medical professionals call the gut the second brain. It has a whole nervous system there called the uh, enteric ner nervous system. And it's uh, incredible uh, as they're doing more and more research on the gut, finding out about it. The gut's responsible for absorbing nutrients. And uh, it's been stated that Americans really are not malnourished, we're malabsorbed. We're not only eating poor quality food, but we're not even absorbing the things that we're eating. And so we actually have more bacteria in our gut than we have cells in our body. 
That's how many there are. There's a hundred trillion bacteria in our gut. And there is more DNA information in the gut bacteria than there is in our cells. So these play a huge, a, a vital role. I was shocked when I found out this. Gut bacteria actually communicate with the central nervous system to turn genes on and to turn genes off. So when you're messing with your gut bacteria, you're actually messing with DNA after a series of steps. You're messing with how genes express. So your gut is extremely important. Now, Sarah Ballantyne, PhD and author of a New York Times bestselling book about autoimmune diseases, she stated this, a leaky gut and gut dysbiosis has been found in every autoimmune disease in which its presence has been investigated. Did you hear that? Every time they investigated to find the presence of gut dysbiosis and leaky gut in an autoimmune patient, they found it. Every time. That's what she said. So we better understand about leaky gut and gut dysbiosis if we want to treat autoimmune diseases. And let me just say it this way. If you neglect your gut, if you don't treat your gut, you're just not going to get better. You're not going to recover your autoimmune situation. You have to understand that. It's very, very central. And, you know, a beautiful thing is the natural state of the gut bacteria is a healthy one. And the natural state is the 85 to 15 percent where the good outweighs the bad. And I think that's fantastic that we were given a, a healthy start, that health is the natural state. And <clears throat> in this natural, it, so if we start that way, if that's the natural state, if health is the natural state, then how do we end up over here? How do we end up with this imbalance in the gut? Something has to happen in between, right? So here are the common factors that contribute to gut dysbiosis, this imbalance in the gut. First, <clears throat> antibiotics. One really key factor, birth control pills. The use of other hormones, especially uh, immunosuppressants. By the way, I mean, hello, th that's what you get when you're an autoimmune patient. You get uh, steroids, you get immune suppressants. My mom was on prednisone for like, over a decade. And so, but they contribute to gut dysbiosis. <clears throat> a bad diet, especially one that's really high in refined sugar, poor digestion, alcohol, stress, all these things break down the gut and cause an imbalance in the, uh, the bacterial um, population in the gut. And these things, many of them, they, they wipe out gut bacteria indiscriminately, both good and bad. And when the gut bacteria begin to repopulate, the bad often outrun the good. Because think about this, keep in mind, the good bacteria, they need to get up to 85%, right? To keep that bad under check, to keep them in control, to have that dominant presence. And the bad, how, what do they need to get to? What percentage? Past 15%, they're already able to start repopulating faster. So when it comes to repopulating, who do you think is going to reach their finish line first? The one that has to get to 85% or the one that has to get to 15%? the one that has to only get to 15%. And so the bad bacteria can dominate real quick when the gut has been wiped out. And so uh, the bad bacteria repopulate faster, and then you have gut dysbiosis. And many autoimmune symptoms set in. They start taking place. Now, I will say glyphosate. Remember we talked about glyphosate with toxic foods and GMOs, that herb sp that's uh, herbicide sprayed on GMO plants. That is a powerful antibiotic that only kills beneficial bacteria. It leaves the bad alone, kills the good. I mean, that's the worst. So uh, that stuff is very toxic for us. So getting down to the, you know, a real basic understanding. So what's the bad do? What's the good do? And really, why is it bad for the bad to, you know, have more of a presence and the good to be, uh, have a less of presence? One health professional put it real simple. Good bacteria eats toxins and poops out vitamins. Bad bacteria eats vitamins and poops out toxins. So you want that good bacteria in there that's eating toxins and you know, their, their, their product, their end product is vitamins. Bad bacteria does the exact opposite. Eats your vitamins, poops out toxins. So get this, bad bacteria in your gut when it starts to get out of control actually starts eating your food before you do. It'll start gobbling up your nutrients before they have time to be absorbed and assimilated into your body. So think about this. 
maybe you got some autoimmune symptoms, you're really trying to make some good health choices, you're eating a lot of plant-based foods, maybe you watch some of these videos and you're like, oh, I'm gonna start, you know, kicking that toxic food, I'm gonna start eating you know, lots of good whole plant foods, and you're eating all these wonderful vitamins and uh, minerals that are going into your intestine, if you have gut dysbiosis, your bad bacteria will literally steal it before you could get to it. You will not get benefited. You, you'll, you'll get very little of it because these bad bacteria, they're robbing it inside of you. It's like having this thief live inside your body. It's terrible. And this leads to malnourishment. This leads to malabsorption. We're talking deficiency in B vitamins, deficiency in folate, deficiency in iron. And right there, I just described a perfect scenario for fatigue, chronic fatigue and anemia, which is a really common situation with people having an autoimmune disease. Fatigue, no energy. And this is largely, what I just described is largely why that takes place. And so when these bad bacteria colonies get so large, they start excreting so much waste. Remember I told you they eat vitamins and they poop out waste, they start excreting so much waste that it actually starts overburdening the body. And this can result in headaches, this can result in skin rashes, because you know the skin is one of your body's avenues of elimination. Your body's just trying to get rid of junk when, you, when you're breaking out in rashes. That's what's essentially taking place there, unless you've had some, something acute like poison ivy or something. Fatigue, all these things, they, they result as the body's elimination pathways getting overwhelmed by this waste that these bad bacteria are outputting. Sleep is also an issue. Something else shocking that I learned, do you know uh, where your serotonin is produced? And serotonin, that's uh, one of those sleep hormones that leads over to melatonin that helps you regulate sleep. I thought the brain, no. The majority, the great majority of your, of your serotonin is produced in your gut. 90 to 95% serotonin is produced in your gut. So if your gut's damaged, what's gonna to happen to your serotonin levels? It's gonna drop. What's gonna to happen to your sleep? Are you gonna be able to sleep well? Are you gonna feel like resting when you lay down at night? It's gonna, it's gonna give you sleep issues. So we're talking insomnia, sleep problems, when you have leaky gut and gut dysbiosis. Now also, this leads to, I mentioned iron and B12 deficiencies. If you have those right there, you're looking at anxiety, you're looking at depression, confusion, and a lot of other neurological issues, all these very common in autoimmune patients. And so we want that healthy gut bacteria, we want the healthy gut presence because it saves us from a lot of, uh, a lot of injury, a lot of hard times. So let's just talk, what is an autoimmune disease? It's a disease of the immune system, right? Hence the term autoimmune. It's an immune disease. Auto actually means self. So autoimmune means essentially the immune system attacking itself. Now here's the shocker. Where would you get the majority, where, where would you think that the majority of the immune system is found? Maybe the brain or the spinal cord or the bone marrow, you know, something like that. Did you know 80% of the immune system is found in the gut? 80%. So if you have a messed up gut, you're gonna have messed up what? Immune system. It's gonna affect your immune system as well. If 80% of it's found in the gut. So the gut is so central to health. And that's why there's, uh, it's so important to maintain that gut health. So um, abnormal gut, abnormal immune system situation, you're gonna have autoimmune. And again, I'll state it again, you'll never heal from your autoimmune disease as long as you don't address the gut. The gut must be a priority. You gotta heal those holes from leaky gut. You gotta balance out that gut bacteria. And this is why in my five-step protocol, and uh, we'll get into my five-step protocol further in the seminar, the first two steps deal with the gut. Step number one of my five-step protocol is remove foods and toxins that are damaging the gut. So you have to stop the abuse, stop the damage, stop it right there. The second is heal the leaky gut. So now that you've stopped the damage, now let's start repairing, let's start rebuilding. So the first two steps in the five-step protocol that brought me so much happiness and healing. Now, how do over-processed foods, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, how does that fit in this? Well, let's talk about junk food. What's junk food? Eric, come on, everyone knows what junk food is. We know what it is, so we, some of us uh, are willing to admit it, some aren't. It's the super processed foods. We're talking about pizza, TV dinners, fast food, most chips, sugar cereals, cookies, pastries, junk food, okay? 
all of that feed bad bacteria. That's like super food for the bad bacteria in your gut. Remember, we wanna keep those guys down. You know, actually, it's beneficial to have just a little bit, but we don't want that to get out of control. We don't wanna feed those guys. Those are like the gangsters in the stomach. You know, that's, that's, those are the bad guys. We don't want them to start getting strong and out of control. Now, what about alcohol? Alcohol depletes you of B vitamins. Alcohol is not good for you. And you need B vitamins to have good, healthy genes. Also, you need B vitamins to heal your gut. So we don't want to deplete those. So alcohol is just adding um, an extra burden to the healing process. Alcohol, even in small doses, has been proven to be toxic to the body. And the CDC has named alcohol the third leading cause of disease in the U.S., third leading cause. It raises blood pressure, leads to heart failure. The American Cancer Research uh, uh, Institute of American, of, uh, American Institute of Cancer Research states that there is absolutely no safe level of alcohol consumption when it comes to cancer. None. No safe level. If you don't want to get cancer, that is. So also, I guess it's a, you could kind of easily say that alcohol, it contributes virtually to every disease. It's a contributor. Even modern, uh, um, moderate amounts are proven to suppress frontal lobe stimulation in our brain, which is the seat of our spirituality. It's a seat of our morality, seat of our judgment. It's where we make important decisions. You don't want to hurt your frontal lobe. That, that's you. That's your consciousness. So we want to keep that intact. But wait, don't doctors say alcohol is good for your heart? Well, did you know that the, the factors that are, that are actually in alcohol, in wine, and um, specifically wine we're discussing here, is uh, resveratrol and flavonoids. They're found in alcohol, but you know where they're also found? In grapes, in grape juice. So you could get those, but minus the DOIs and minus the wife beatings and minus all the stuff that's attributed to alcohol consumption. The Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So we want to be wise. God wants us to be wise. That's Proverbs 20, verse 1. Let's talk about caffeine. Friends, caffeine's a drug. It ab abnormally stimulates the central nervous system. It decreases blood flow to the brain by 27%. Is because something legal, does that mean it's okay? Because some big agency said, you know, it's all right, you know, this is illegal, illegal, that's legal. Does it make it okay? It doesn't. We need to be smart. We can't just depend on what all these agencies are saying. It worsens psychiatric illnesses such as anxiety and depression, causes irritability, anxiety, tremors, raises homocysteine in the blood, increasing the risk of heart attacks. It's dehydrating. It decreases our overall energy throughout the day, gives us short energy bursts, but it decreases the overall energy throughout the day. And it inhibits our, our ability to rest at night. And that's actually taking away from your energy the next day. And so here's what we need to do. We've discussed how important the gut is. We've discussed how we want to stay away from leaky gut, how we want to have a good balance in our, um, the bacteria presence in our gut. So here's what we need to do. We want to stay away from eating those foods that are damaging the gut. And so this is, when you just look at that list, instead of looking at the negatives, it's easier to just look at it on a positive sense. It's essentially going to put you on a plant-based diet. So eating natural things, eating things that come from gardens. And this is, you know, this is what I, I've been eating this diet for a very long time. And typically when my wife and I, you know, counsel with people and we tell them that, we kind of get this look like, what do I eat? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what food is left, you know, as if it took away everything. And it might've taken away most of their diet, but there's so much left, friends. There's uh, healthy grains, uh, according to avoiding those grains that uh, we discussed earlier. There's, you know, fruits, there's vegetables, there's beans, legumes. There's lots of beans out there. And we're talking, um, you can, in terms of grains, you know, rice, we're talking, uh, organic non-GMO corn, uh, ancient varieties of wheat if uh, you're tested okay, if you don't have an issue in your um, gut situation. And um, 
Also focusing on, you know, green juices, big salads, lots of fruits and veggies, these types of things. These are the things that you really want to be focusing on if you want to heal your autoimmune disease. Because remember, we need to stop the abuse and then we need to move on to healing. And stopping the abuse is a total cessation, not even a little bit, not even a particle or a morsel. You just have to completely stop because that even just a little bit can start the autoimmune response right up again. Once the immune system has gone really overactive, it's easy to get that thing fired up again. And so you need to totally um, be strict and just avoid all those foods that are harmful. And you need to start focusing on those healing foods. And then the second step, you need to actually start healing the gut. And so what heals the gut? Well, we have things like aloe. Aloe is very, very healing to the gut. And um, my wife and I, you know, we did a demo and where we showed how to eat aloe and, you know, how to buy it, where to find it, all these things. And uh, you could find out more information about that. You could also find out more information on our website. We talk about that as well, reverseautoimmune.com. And turmeric. Turmeric is another one that is very, very healing to the gut. It calms down inflammation. It's going to heal that the those gut walls, heal the lining. Also coconut milk, coconut oils, very, very healing to the gut. You could use those in places of other non-healthy fats. And also uh, there's a special anti-inflammatory healing soup that my wife and I make. It's a potato onion soup, essentially. And that soup is fantastic to take. It tastes, it tastes great. I, I ate, drank the soup ate the soup out um, every evening before I went to bed. And before I went to bed, I would just have the broth. If I wanted to have it as a meal, I'd have it for like a late dinner. Um, and so there's things you can do to actually start healing your gut situation. You don't have to just be uh, managing and, and living with this damaged gut. So remember, two key steps. Uh, these are all the first two of the five-step protocol. First, you need to stop eating those foods that are damaging the gut. Second, you need to actually start being proactive in healing the gut. And, you know, I just want to really encourage you. I find that, you know, just five steps, but I find it could be really challenging for people, especially when it comes to stopping eating those foods. And, you know, sometimes there's actually a chemical dependency. I mean, we can be literally addicted to some of these foods, but I just want to encourage you, you know, your health really depends on it. So just give it a really good shot. Um, you're going to have to learn a new way of shopping, a new way of cooking, but there's lots of information out there. You could go on our website. There's a lot of other websites that you could go on. Uh, a lot of great cookbooks. We're going to be coming out with one. There's a lot of other really great cookbooks that will teach you how to cook these new meals but it's uh you know it's your health it's up to you you're it's all dependent on your choices and i just hope that uh you'll be willing to make those choices and um i hope this information has been not only interesting but beneficial to you and i pray that you'll be blessed in your pursuit of health mm -hmm.